Happening right now, emergency officials are at Lake Murray searching for a man they say jumped into the water and never came back up. Our Genesis Neros has been talking with witnesses and first responders. She's live at the scene with new details this evening. Jenna. That's right, Emily. And about two hours ago, crews with Columbia Fire did leave, but DNR, DNR still has some boats out in the water as we speak, searching and working actively to find this person. Now, they plan to stay out here until it gets dark tonight, which could be around 8.30, and if they don't find the person, they'll continue that search until the morning. So what we know so far is that a man in his 40s jumped into Lake Murray, and he never came back up. Now, I did speak with some family members who did not want to go on camera, but they tell me that they were just having a good time all together for Father's Day, eating chicken on the water, and all of a sudden, they didn't see him come up from the water. A lot of people out here on Lake Murray have stopped to ask me what's going on and seem to be very concerned. So it's just very, very sad. My family and my husband are all up there eating. I just couldn't eat. I've been standing out here just hoping for a miracle. <laughs> And since I've been out here, I've seen crews with RCMS, RCSD, DNR, and Columbia Fire. But again, DNR, DNR crews will be out here actively searching. And if they don't find him, that search will continue into the early morning hours. For now, we are live in Lexington County, Genesis Narrows, WIS News 10. Thanks, Jenna. Certainly hoping for good news there. We'll have the latest details on this developing story posted on our free WIS News app. Well, plenty of sun this Father's Day. Temperatures have been in the mid 90s, but it's feeling even hotter. And if you think today's heat is bad, that thermometer is only going up from here. Meteorologist Kevin Arnone has more on the heat wave ahead for your work week. Kevin, I don't know if it can get worse than this. Oh, it certainly can. Wait till you see some of these temperatures that we're going to be expecting as we take a look at the first alert seven day forecast coming up. But do want to set you up, uh, put your mind at ease here with the satellite radar view. You can see there are a couple showers, really not much going on right now. Mostly quiet one in Winsboro County. That's about it. But other than that, uh, again, uh, it's, it's pretty quiet. Uh, upstate are seeing a few showers, uh, but again, no severe thunderstorm warnings for us. It is pretty quiet and it's going to be mostly quiet as we go through really the rest of the evening into the night tonight. Now, as far as the temperatures, this is where we were today. Check this out. It was 94 Columbia. It was 95 in Winsboro. How about 94 in Lexington and it hit 90 over in Saluda, 91 in Orangeburg. So it was a relatively hot day today and it felt even warmer when you did factor in the humidity. How about right now? Look at this. It feels like 102 in Lexington, 97 Columbia feels like 97 as well as in Orangeburg and about 88 as you head over towards Manning, one of the cooler temperatures on this map. Now this heat index is only going to get worse as we go through the next couple of days. I kept the shower chance in there through around, let's say eight o'clock and then we're going to be fine as we go into the night tonight. Temperatures do drop eventually down into the mid 70s. Emily, wait till you see the first alert seven day forecast. We're talking actual temperatures, triple digits. Are you ready for it? I don't think I am. Thanks, <laughs> Kevin. Well, new at six, one person is dead and another person is hurt after being ejected from their car in Orangeburg County this morning. Authorities say the car was traveling on SC Highway 4 near Frank White Road when the car ran off the side of the road and overturned. Both people inside the car were not wearing seat belts and were thrown from that car. Right now, no word on the victim's name or the condition of the person injured. A somber Sunday for our state. Today marks three years since these nine lives were taken in a shooting during a Bible study inside Emmanuel Ami Church in Charleston. The church is planning to host several events this week to commemorate the anniversary and honor the lives lost. This morning, worshipers at Bethel Ami Church in Columbia paid tribute to the victims during a call to remembrance. Yeah, we think it's important that we not forget what happened down south in Charleston when those nine persons, it was more than that, of course, but when those individuals joined together to study God's word, and of course, their lives were, were snatched away. The shooter, Dylan Roof, was sentenced to death in January of last year. Some frustration for Father's Day travelers in Charlotte. Two ground stops at Charlotte Douglas International have left passengers waiting inside the airport. American Airlines says flights today were held because of technical issues with PSA Airlines, which is the American Airlines regional carrier. It's mostly affecting flights in and out of Charlotte. Our sister station there spoke to passengers who say they want more information on the technical issues. 
That's very vague. Um, that could mean something small like a computer thing, or it could be a major computer thing where it affects the actual um, plane. And I don't want something like that to happen, of course. You're in the air, technical difficulties, you're out of the air. We don't want that. <laughs> so, yeah, so a little bit more information would be uh, helpful, beneficial, and put me more at ease. Today's delays come just days after more than 100 flights were canceled Thursday night because of technical issues again with PSA Airlines. Well, frantic moments after festival goers are forced to take cover as gunshots ring out at an arts festival last night. Well, within the last hour, New Jersey police have given an update on the shooting, which left a gunman dead and more than 20 others injured. Police say it appears the shooting was the result of a neighborhood dispute. NBC's Dan Shineman reports. The shooting started just before 3 a.m. at a crowded arts festival. And then all of a sudden, about 10 shots ring out slightly inside the door. It was like pow, 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 pow. Police estimate as many as 1,000 people were in the area when the shooting started. More than 20 people were hurt. 17 of them suffered gunshot wounds. The preliminary investigation reveals that multiple individuals attending the art all night event opened fire within the venue. And to, to this date and time, multiple weapons have been recovered. Investigators say one suspect, a 33-year-old male, was killed, apparently by police. Another suspect is in police custody. The shooting appears to be related to several gangs having, uh, neighborhood gangs, uh, from here in the city of Trenton having a dispute at the venue. This all happened at a popular fundraiser for local artists. Uh, art all night is sort of have, has become quite a tradition, quite a, a touchstone here in Trenton, and it's just awful that it was broken uh, up like this so awfully in the middle of the of the night. The investigation is ongoing, and Trenton becomes the latest community to face tragedy. Dan Shenneman, NBC News. Police are also investigating an attempted carjacking that occurred in a nearby alley, and are working to determine if that's connected to the shooting. Well, one Georgia family is suffering tremendous heartache after their babysitter's dog mauled a five-month-old baby to death. It happened Tuesday night in a suburb, suburb of Atlanta. A family friend was watching the infant in his house. He says she fell asleep in a bed and then he went to sleep in a different room. Someone called police around 3 a.m. saying the man's German Shepherd killed the baby. The child's mother says that dog knew her entire family and never showed any aggression. He ate by us, he slept by us, he followed us, and, you know, sometimes I have her in her car seat and he just go over there and check on me, and he'll walk away. I just never heard of nothing like this. No charges have been filed so far, but animal control officials have euthanized the dog. A Kansas child's appreciation for art has his family facing a big bill. We'll show you the video that sparked an ongoing debate over who will pay for a damaged statue. Plus, a hot Father's Day will give way to dangerous heat for your work week. We'll tell you when you can feel temperatures well above 100 degrees. Emily, it'll feel like 108. Oof. All right, let me let that sink in. Thanks for that, Kevin. Well, Columbia Mayor Steve Benjamin continues his tradition of celebrating dads with his annual Father's Day cookout. This is the third year the mayor has hosted this free event that's open to the public. Dozens of families stop by Hyatt Park for food, fun and music. The mayor says today is about celebrating an important figure in our families who doesn't always get fair recognition. It's just a chance to bring a community together, recognizing the strength of, of, of the nuclear family and the role that, that good fathers play in, in making that family strong and vibrant. Uh, I, I grew up with a wonderful father. God couldn't have blessed me with a better man in, in my life. And recognizing that if, you're, if it's dad or if it's an uncle or a godfather or a grandfather, that uh, taking an opportunity to celebrate that man and the role that he plays in our lives is something that can't be overlooked. That cookout just ended at 6 this evening, but Mayor Benjamin says he plans to continue the tradition and hopes it grows even bigger. 
Well, some Father's Day fun facts for you. According to Hallmark, Father's Day is the fourth largest card sending occasion with 72 million cards given every year. Almost 20% of those cards are given to husbands. The first Father's Day was celebrated in 1910, but it wasn't until 1966 that President Lyndon Johnson signed a proclamation calling for Father's Day to be celebrated on the third Sunday of every June. President Nixon made things official with a law in 1972. Coming up in Arizona, man's attempt to return a computer to Walmart lands him behind bars. How police say the man cost Walmart more than a million dollars over the years. A story trending on our website this evening. A man and woman may be stuck with a big bill after their young son toppled a $132,000 sculpture inside a Kansas community center. The incident, which happened during a wedding reception last month, was all caught on surveillance video. Tom Dempsey spoke to the mom. Sarah Goodman remembers the wedding reception at Tomahawk Ridge Community Center, starting off with plenty of celebration. I think there was a few different parties going on, bridal showers, birthday parties. A joyous occasion that in a moment turned into something much different. I hear yelling, where is your mother? Surveillance video capturing Sarah's five-year-old son hugging a sculpture on display before it topples over on top of him. He struggles for a bit when suddenly it falls to the ground. After rushing into help, Sarah soon learned the sculpture's price tag. Maybe this is like 800 or something. No, it's $132,000. I'm sorry, we're finished here. Damage that an insurance company said the family would be on the hook to pay for. My children are well supervised, but all people get distracted. The two parents now questioning the safety of the display. It's in the main walkway, not a separate room, not plexiglass, not protected, not held down. The city calling the incident an unfortunate situation, but saying the artwork should not have been touched. There's a societal responsibility that you may not interact with it, you know, if it's not designed for interaction. An expensive price tag, leaving the family wondering what could lie ahead. So the insurance company says, and if they're going to take it to lawyers, we don't know. Well, the spokesperson for the city says the sculpture was never meant to be touched. A man was arrested in Arizona for purchasing computers at Walmart, allegedly removing important parts and then returning the computers for a full refund. 23-year-old Thomas Frutiker was taken into police custody on Wednesday after he went into a Walmart to return a computer that he had purchased earlier. Further investigation revealed he had done the same at more than 1,000 Walmarts across the country. Walmart lost $1.3 million because of Frutiker's fraudulent returns. Coming up in sports, we spotlight former Carolina baseball coach Jerry Meyer's journey back to health. The longtime USC pitching coach shares his story exclusively with WIS. Sports is coming up next. We'll have highlights back 11, but Dustin Johnson put together a good showing throughout the four rounds. Just didn't have enough with his putter today to complete the mission. Played a good game, but they did have some tough conditions yesterday, right? Yes, sir. Today, it Not was Not an fair. excuse today. No, he had to make putts. <laughs> he didn't do it. All right. Thanks for that, Joe. Final check of your forecast right after this. Well, before we go, we'd like to take a moment oh, nice. and wish a happy Father's Day to all the WIS dads out there. Ours are all far away, but we're still Imagine wishing dance. them. Oh, well, look at I that. Like those salmon <laughs> pants right there. <laughs> Happy Father's Day out there to all the dads. Special day, but you definitely have enough heat to celebrate today. That's oh, for yeah. sure. Get out and barbecue and eat all the good food and yeah. just relax. That's what a dad's dream is on a day like today. Relax, relax and just and chill enjoy. out. There's my I hope pops that's what my right dad's there. Doing. I can't yeah. stay out there too long, though, for a barbecue. It's too hot. A little too hot. You know? I mean, that's you where can... you get the tan, though. That's true. You're welcome. I think I'm good there, so I can't, <laughs> I can't stay out there too long. Uh, yeah, you know, we're talking temperatures the next couple of days, guys. Some serious heat. 97 tomorrow, 99 for Tuesday, 100 degrees for Wednesday. Those are your actual temperatures. You know that little car thermometer you have? That's what's going to say. But when you step outside your car that's AC'd, it's going to be feeling more like 105 to 108. That's why we have those alert days up Monday through Thursday. So some very serious heat coming to the Midlands the next couple of days. You don't even have to look at a thermometer in this heat. You know <laughs> yeah, well, that's, it's that's hot right. out there. Try and stay cool. We're back at 11. Thanks for watching.